Greetings everyone. I am on YouTube. This is my first video and I'm going to try to do a series on eventually on the Blood Covenant. Um, but today I'm going to just kind of give you an intro into the beginning part of my journey and it's my journey from leaving legalism and religious mindset behind um, and going into the wonderful realization of our loving father and his unconditional love for us. I was raised up in a, a wonderful church, beautiful people, loving pastor, always felt accepted, always felt loved. And my pastor was continually building people up <clears throat> and he was just a wonderful person. And I thank God for him. But there were some things I learned during that time I realized now that were wrong and I don't fault them for it, but it set me on a course of trying to please God, trying to prove my love to God. So from the time I was 15 until my mid 40s, for nearly 30 years, I spent my life trying to prove my love to God. And I did this by attending church every time the doors were open. I mean, that's what we were made to believe, that good Christians go to church and good Christians are involved in ministry and they pay their tithes and all these things. And I was glad to do it. I had experienced a wonderful move of God in my life and when I was 15, where I experienced God's love. And I went to youth camp, and that whole time we were there, from the time I stepped foot off that bus, I was enveloped by the supernatural realization of God's love. And I was baptized in the Spirit, and um, that experience just totally shifted my life. Where I became, <clears throat> I fell in love with Jesus so much, and I don't regret that experience. Um, I thank God for it. It got me through some hard, hard times at my home life. And, um, and fast forward to my 40s. I'm married with four kids. My husband and I, we moved into a new town and started going to another church um, of the same denomination. But this one was different. I didn't feel the love in this church that I did in other churches. The preaching was very harsh, very condemning, and the tone of the preaching was scornful. And there were a few times where this pastor publicly humiliated people and reprimanding them. And I felt that was very wrong. And my husband and I, we were in leadership. We were in children's church. And um, I never knew when it was gonna be us that would be next because they went leaders were um, leaving the church they were being I felt like they were being pushed out I don't know what was going on but anyway I'm not here to badmouth them I, I I don't have any ill feelings toward them at all I really don't I thank God because I would go home and I would say God are you like this and during this time I had fallen and hit my back and my head on some wet concrete. And after that, my neck went stiff. I couldn't hardly turn it. My shoulders felt like steel fingers were squeezing them. And I was in excruciating pain. And I had this flu-like ache all the time. I was in complete miserable. My youngest child was six years old. And on top of the pain, I had chronic fatigue. I'd, I had suffered fatigue from my 30s. Um, I think part of that was sitting at a desk because I worked, you know, outside the home. And, and I think sitting makes you really tired. But anyway, um, even though I tried to exercise, I tried to be active because I knew that it still I fought fatigue. And now I'm thinking it wasn't that at all. It was my mindset. It was how I viewed God, because see, we were taught that salvation's a gift, and their idea of salvation was when you die, you get to go to heaven, and if you don't accept the gift, you go to hell. So the gift is to keep you, is your get out of hell free card. But, and then you just reach out and take it, it's yours. 
but there was a bait and switch. Now that you have it, you got to make sure you don't lose it. And that you got to make sure there's no sin in you. You got to keep yourself 100% pure and holy and and you got to strive to be perfect and be good. And these this is what I was taught. And so I spent 30 years trying to do that. I was obsessed with proving my love to God. And then when I fell and I got sick, I couldn't do that anymore. So then I was filled with self-loathing and then going to church and feeling this misery, physical misery, and hearing these harsh sermons on top of that. I really just felt like a loser and I hated myself and um, I knew that was wrong so what I started doing is I'd hear these messages and I'd go home God are you really like that and what I thank God for is I thank God for this harsh teaching I thank God for it because I would never question anything if they had been loving and kind like my other pastors, I would have kept trying to jump through the hoops to please them. But this guy was different. <laughs> there was no pleasing them. There was no measuring up. So that was a good thing for me because it brought me to the end of myself. And I told the Lord I wanted a revelation of the gospel because I... I felt like, how can I argue the gospel when I feel like a failure with the gospel I was taught? So I felt like whatever I was taught, I was going to push it aside. Everything I was taught about God, I'm going to just push it away. And I want God himself to reveal to me what the gospel is. Because Paul, there's a passage, I believe it's, a, it's in Galatians, where he said he was not taught by man the gospel. He learned it from God himself. And then Jesus told the disciples he would send them the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit would bring back to their remembrance everything concerning him. So I felt like the Holy Spirit is within me and he could teach me what I need to know about Jesus because there's this verse that he kept taking me to. It's 1 John 4, 7 and 8. It says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. But he that doesn't love doesn't know God, for God is love. So it was this verse that got me thinking, you know, because I'm seeing the evidence of no love in this church. I saw the pastor publicly reprimand someone scornfully, cruelly. I thought, that's not love. I knew that. So, and then over in Ephesians, Paul told, told the Ephesians he was praying for them to know the depths, the height, the width of God's love. And this is after he's already rooted and grounded them in the love. And it says his love is beyond our knowing. We, we, can't, we can't think it. Does that make sense? And so I thought, okay, I need to understand it. And the only way I'm going to understand it, if God opens up my understanding. And there is other verses he took to me to, like over in Romans. Um, it says, there's none that do good. No, not one. There's none that seek him. So that told me right there, there wasn't anything in me that got God to love me. Okay. That much I knew. But I really was confused. I mean, I was in such, and being in pain didn't help. I mean, the fog of your brain it, thoughts is, it's, I can't describe it, that it's just hard to think clearly when you're racked with pain. The pain kind of becomes your center because it's screaming at you all the time. But I was desperate. There was one night when I could not sleep, which was typical because of the pain. And I was desperate. I was in my living room, and I got down on my knees and said, God, I need, to, I need some sleep, Lord. But there was something I needed more than sleep. I wanted to know what God is like. And I begged him, Lord, please reveal to me what you're really like. And um, 
that night I had a dream and I was in this room crowded with people and the room was very dark except for there was a light kind of filtering in and made it hazy and all these people in the room were crowding around me and they had handcuffs on their wrists and they kept coming to me wanting me to unlock the handcuffs and I kept trying to see the lock to unlock it and I couldn't see because the light wasn't bright enough and something kept whispering in my ear get them to the light get them to the light get them to the light and I woke up and I didn't realize it was a spiritual dream because I had never had one before that I know of so I went to write it down in my journal because usually dreams don't stick with me but this one did and as I wrote it down the Holy Spirit opened my eyes that this was a spiritual dream and he was trying to show me something and I realized that I was on the rack right track to know God because knowing him is what breaks the chains off of us and I knew I was this was the way to go to seek to know him and I felt like that woman in the Bible who had an issue of, bl of blood and she pressed through the crowd just so she could touch the hem of Jesus garment and I felt like I was pressing through 30 years of indoctrination to know my father. Because <clears throat> I, I realized in this testing that what I'd been testing wasn't solid. And that's what testing does. You know, when you're going through a trial, whatever you've built your life on, it's, it's going to reveal any, any uh, weaknesses in that. And that's what God was showing me, was that he and he alone is the only one who can break our chains. And um, it was later on I realized even more about that dream. And that's kind of how God works. He gives you a picture of something, and then, he, then you, go, you seek him to understand it more fully. And over time, you get re it's like an onion. It gets peeled back more and more. And I, I realized a lot of that bondage now I look back it was not just sin bondage but bondage of legalism and religion and um, and people are are um, under this and they're they're they don't have the joy like me like I was they don't have the joy and the peace that the scriptures talk about and they don't ever question what they're taught and I just want to encourage you to do that because the Holy Jesus loves to reveal himself to us. But we have to be willing to lay down the boxes that we have put God in. And every denomination has limited God in some way. And <clears throat> so further down the road of the seeking to know God and um, what he's really like. <clears throat> I, it was, I don't know how much further it was, but I was laying down on the couch, which was common during this time, and my husband was watching some preacher on the TV, which I didn't usually get into. But um, this person said this one thing, and they said one of the first things God gives to us when we get saved is his righteousness. And the Holy Spirit just brought it was like, how can I express this in English terms? It was like a thousand light bulbs going off in a dark room. All of a sudden, it re I realized what was going on. That, And what happened was during this moment of revelation, my whole Christian walk from the time I was 15 just flashed before me of me trying to make myself righteous. Of all the preachers that were preaching self-righteousness and that <clears throat> it was like a ball and chain had snapped off my neck that that trying to make myself righteous was the opposite of salvation and because remember there's none that do good no not one and there's a verse that goes with it. It's 2 Corinthians 5, 21, and I love this verse. He, talking about Jesus, who knew no sin, 
became sin on our behalf that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. And there's other verses that talk about righteousness by faith. And I'm going to put the references down below in this description. Do yourself a favor and do a little Bible study and look those verses up. And if you're not a reader, you can go look them up on that online Bible. I can't think of the app. I'll put it on here too. And they actually have an audio. You can look it up in the audio and listen to it if you're not a reader. Because there's a lot of people that have um, reading disabilities. But you can actually listen to it. And I suggest, you know, starting a few, starting at the beginning of the chapter and listen all the way through so you get it in context of what he's saying. So when I had this revelation of righteousness by faith, I realized that the churches I had been in, that's what they had been teaching. Um, and I, I know people because I came out of that mindset because they view righteousness as, as you know behaving a certain way <clears throat> I found late I found out later that righteousness has to do with covenant and covenant relationship and um, see when people hear you talk about this um, I would call it grace it's something we don't deserve, obviously. <clears throat> People that hear that grace, and I know I was one. I thought this way for 30 years. What they hear is that you want to sin and get away with it. And that's so far from the truth. Because when you encounter this love of love, this revelation of love, and you experience it, all those things that you did or tried not to do or tried to resist, they have no hold on you anymore. See, the scripture says sin will no longer dom you know, dominate you or rule over you. <clears throat> because all the sin was nailed to the cross. Jesus became that sin and he took it. And I have no desires to sin. Um, and I'm not saying I never struggle with sin, but that's not my focus. I, How can I describe it? It's a total miracle. It's the working, you know, there's a scripture that says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. And salvation is coming into that oneness that we have with God. And I'll get into more of that because the covenant, when I learned the covenant, it grew my faith like nothing else. I cannot, I can't believe I went over 30 years without even realizing what a covenant is. And I heard the word once in a while, but I didn't know what it meant. You know, it's not something we have in our culture. And so in my future um, podcast, what I want to do is share with you what that covenant is and, and kind of take it slow so you can get it and focus on that because it really set me free. It set me free from that constant examining myself. It set me free from that constant repenting, afraid that I was going to go hell if I had unrepentant sin in me. It set me free from the fear of displeasing God. It set me free from so many things. And the covenant teaching um, took all, all the fear out of me because I had this underlying fear that somehow um, we weren't, we weren't going to have an income, that somehow we were going to, you know, I don't know where this came from, probably somewhere in my childhood, but once I understood the covenant, I didn't worry more because my husband, I had to quit my job, so that was one thing. We lost a third of our income. My husband had his own business, and when you have your own business, you've got to make enough money to pay your Social Security and your, you know, your your federal taxes. You have to make enough money to to do that. And when you're self-employed, you have to pay in double on your Social Security and, and Medicare because you're paying the employer part and the employee part. And when I worked, I paid my husband. I paid in more to pay for my husband's. So that would help out a lot. But now we didn't have that. So now that 
once I understood the covenant, I no longer worried about finances. And we have never, God has always provided, always. And um, I don't worry anymore. And when you have a business, you, you, I would do the scheduling. That Even though I was sick, I still did that. But um, there would be all these empty days with no, no appointments. And I would just say, Lord, you know what we need. You know our, our needs. Just, you know, provide and he would. So in the future, what I want to do is go over the covenant with you and um, help you to realize God's love for you. It's beyond what you can think or imagine. And and meanwhile, until my next podcast, ask the Lord show you to show you his love, to reveal it to you, and he will. And and the downside of it, and I'm going to warn you, because I stayed in church a long time after this revelation, and I tried to fit in, but I felt myself slipping back into that self-examination mode that's that bondage and um, of trying to do everything right and I finally my husband and I we felt led of the Lord to leave traditional church and now we belong to a home fellowship and um, and that's another thing maybe I'll get into that later too is my perspective on what church is has totally changed and um, so I don't I want to quit talking now and I just want to pray for you that God will open your eyes so that you can know him more intimately because when you know him you will love people loving others and each other is a result of knowing our father because he's he he dwells within us he promised never to leave us or forsake us in spite of whatever you were taught that every time you sin God leaves you that's not true. Jesus said not, that he would never leave us or forsake us. And we can trust him. He doesn't lie. So God bless you. May your eyes be open to know the truth. And tune in next time. God bless.